I have just finished the fifth and final recording with Gary, which is a touch bittersweet. Not because I won't get to talk to him again, because I will get to talk to him again. Many times, just as I had before we started recording and publishing these conversations. But the bittersweetness lies in the fact that I love sharing these conversations. The, the dance of these conversations, because that's what they are. Starting off with my bedoing again. And being you know, it's easy to be open and honest and vulnerable and there with Gary because he's such a great receiver and such a great sender as well. He mirrors me and makes me more aware of what it is that I'm feeling and experiencing in the moment. So join us for this fifth conversation, the most likely fifth and final conversation and the 25th and final conversation in this season. Uh, thank you, Spian, with Helena. Have fun. Hello, my friend. Hi. Did you notice I've already pressed recording? Yes, yes. And in my <laughs> human nature, I was waiting on a different Zoom for the host to let me. You were and in a different meeting. You froze. You were in a different yeah. meeting waiting for me. Well, there you can wait. Yeah. So my apologies <laughs> for that. And. I'm having internet difficulties. Yeah. And they can't figure it out. So I apologize that we may be a bit in okay. and out. Okay. Well, we'll work it out. I'm having neck issues. I woke up this morning and, you know, torticollis, is that what, what it's called? When you, I can't really go further than that because it just, it's, so stiff, you know. Mm -hmm. It's called mm -hmm. naxper in Swedish. Naxper. Naxper. Perfect. Yes, naxper. Nak is neck, and spar means a, a stop, a break, where you know a, you can't pass through it, so you can't get your neck to go further than that. So what is it about your life that you feel you cannot pass through in the moment? So that is the thing. I knew you would get this. I get this when there's something that I'm not saying, that I'm not voicing. Then my oh. neck just does this. So for the last couple of years of marriage with my husband, I had this a lot. I kind curious. of figured it out after he left when it disappeared that, Oh, <laughs> yeah. there was something I wasn't saying. So. so if I'm relating to you as closely as we are or possible, I would say I feel such sadness and such heaviness and such, oh my God, I just want to hold you and hug you. Not as a, not as a, person who can't do or is incapable, but just that's where my heart goes. Yeah. yeah. I would love that. Mm. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. It was interesting. I had a I had a session with Dominic thir Monday and it's Thursday mm -hmm. today. So, 
And for some reason, it kind of turned into a fairy tale episode where mm. I will, I don't really know how we got into it, but he was like, do you know the story of Cinderella? Could you tell it to me? And I did. And he said, do you know the story of, of uh, uh, Little Red Riding Hood? And I said, yeah, I do. And I told it to him. And then he asked about Bluebeard. And it's like, Bluebeard, I only know from women who run with the wolves. I don't know that from my past. Um, but I could kind of tell it. And in all of them, somewhere along the line, I had like memory gap. So the thing that kind of made the transitions happen in, in those fairy tales was just, I can't remember how, but this is what happened. Um, and then I was telling him about about somebody that I met that I just, I have this experience of not being very interesting to them. And kind of in my head, playing out some type of fantasy, you know, wishful thinking, whatever, what it could be based on like what it kind of is in text or something. And then when we meet up in person, it's just bam, okay. That, you know, the the magic of the pumpkin turning into this lovely carriage and the clothes and the stuff and it just, you know, clock strikes midnight and it's poof, gone. Kind of that feeling when, oh, when we meet, it's like there's nothing of that thing that I'm wishing maybe could be mm -hmm. um, and it was so interesting to kind of well yeah to, to kind of sense into this thing of where I I, I'm curious about people, right? I'm, I'm curious, I wanna know, I'm, it's like, tell me more. Which I love, I love doing, and I love when it's, I also love when people are interested in me. You know, when it is a dance, kind of, you know, kind of like Lindy Hop. We've been speaking about this before. You dance two people in Lindy Hop, but it's not the one who decides what both should dance. It's both parties are responsible for how they dance, what they do, how they do it, etc. Yes, there's a lead and a follow, but don't for a second think that the lead decides how the dance will be because the follow has agency, right? So it's it's that type of, of thing that, you know, I love conversations where it's you ask a question and I say something and then maybe you ask another and I say something more, but then I ask and you, you know, it's like, it's that dance. Mm -hmm. And when it isn't there, you know, I ask questions and I get interesting answers but then I have to ask a new question to get more interesting answers and a new question to get more interesting answers. Mm -hmm. And it's not or rarely kind of reciprocated. I turn fairly short. When there then is a question back to me, I just give the most short answer because it doesn't feel as if they truly are interested. It feels like, okay, I'll have to throw in a question now because she really hasn't said anything for half an hour, so I'd better. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, might be perfectly just within me, but it is within me. That's what I sense. That's what I feel. Um, so it's been, yeah, it's been interesting. So then waking up with this is like, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
how am I speaking about this? To whom am I speaking about this? And what do I... Because it kind of falls into this... Like old patterns of not, you know, not having worth, not being interesting, not being worthy of attention or, you know, curiosity or, or anything. Um, and, and as you speak all of this, <clears throat> notwithstanding, there's many things on the table of which we could pull out any morsel and speak about and not precluding that either, but do you feel any anger at so, this person? So that's the thing. I, no. Huh. May I inquire further? Yes, you may. I wonder if that's the a missing element that is a plumb line that solves the riddle that you are in. Partly why I say this, again, if I'm experiencing adeptly or closely or close to reality here, whoever this person is you just spoke about, I am furious at, furious. And I could use all of my eloquent French, which is the abominable English, perhaps, as you know, but it's like, is that my projection? Is that a symmetry of response that is that plumb line that perhaps is the missing element to solve the riddle for you? Uh, I'm exploring all of that, but it's like, wow. I want to just say, your time is done, wherever that person is. Possibly could have to step into this love that Helena is offering. And you have refused. And you have abused it. And you have negated it. And you have gone beyond the, the, the element of tolerance for what good-hearted people should continue to be involved with or try to um, stay with. Go! Out! Gone! Done! My time is more valuable. Now, that's all personification, perhaps, but that's my symmetrical experience as you speak. And there's, and, and tears arise with me because there's a deep-seated love in my heart and not as, for you, and not as, in that dance you speak about, not as in old versions where, the, not, not the fairy tale version, but that dance version of love, of care, of concern, of fierceness, of tenderness, of sovereignty, of protection, as we've spoken about before. So don't mess. Don't mess here. And it's not that you need anything in that. You know, you have your own fierceness and you dance in all of these arenas. But it's like, don't mess. Don't treat her like that. Move aside. Part the waters. I'm going to go to another dance. Gladly. Perhaps sadly in, in time or in the moments, but with a full heart to seek out another dance. And I, for one, if I might just continue another little bit of an opening. Always. <laughs> always. 
And this is met with all the tenderness and love that, of which I just spoke. I would love to see you angry. Appropriately, not acting out or just at a whim or on the opposite side, splitting that fairy tale to the opposite side of just being angry, but appropriately in that dance. Pushing that partner away and says, you know what? Look at all the other dance partners who are going, pick me. Thank you for that. It, yeah. And it is also so interesting. What well, with the, I mean, this is the ongoing story, right, of, of these pods uh, or our conversations, my bedoing, um, mm -hmm. where Two of the guys that I had really good connection with text-wise that neither one of them was anyone where I, like, even for a second imagined this is the love of my life. Like, no, that wasn't, that wasn't the thing. But really deep and intimate and, and open and honest and exploratory you know the way that I kind of tend to do it's like oh and and you know stepping into answering a question you know even though I feel like I'm on really shaky ground here and oh that's so interesting and fun you know because there's possibility to learn um about me and about others and stuff but two of them kind of went missing at the same time without saying anything. So they're still, they haven't deleted their profiles, but they just haven't been on. They haven't been online for like five weeks or something um, without, you know, it, it kind of just stopped short in the middle of a conversation, just gone. And then you have this type of person who is the, okay, yeah, we've met up on a lunch and a walk and a this and that, but it's like, nah, not really. But then in my mind, it turns into something, even though to start off with, it's like, mm, you know, potential friend, not nothing else, but uh, maybe the wishful thinking comes in there, right? Kind of trumps, trumps intuition and says, no, but maybe. Um, and then other, it's like, so the common thread in a sense is not available, not here, not not da not dance partners, right? It's like at a distance or, you know, disappearing or, um, which makes me wonder about me, you know? Again, what am I sending out? What am I ready for uh, with bunny ears? What am I needing to explore? here, what's there for me to see about me, about relationships, about dating, about, you know, I don't know about what, but all of them, you know. Um, And this, I had this sense the other morning or the other evening or whatever. Oh, it was, no, yeah, it was the other, it was in the weekend. And I voiced it to Dominic because 
And the weekend, I had a 25-hour digital Sabbath from Saturday afternoon until Sunday afternoon. And it's just lovely. So I did uh, no social media, no emails, no Netflix, no nothing, because I used my computer for as a TV, right? Mm -hmm. I did put music on even though I have only music on my screens, but that was all I did. And I read, I read a book. I sat in the sofa reading a book and, you know, it's just, it is lovely. And when I got to Dominic on Monday morning for the session, it's like, there's this longing in me for the kind of connection that you and I have here, that I have with other in the creative community, that I have with, with other friends, my campfire sisters, and you know, my mastermind group. And I want it physically. I want somebody here with me you know somebody who could sit in the other corner of the sofa reading with me you know it doesn't have to be you know more than that basically but just that mm -hmm. i need somebody here i need somebody who's physically here. you know i want that i want i want that uh, and I started crying and yeah, well, you know. And that sense hasn't been, I haven't had that strong sense of that. And it's interesting, one of the other men I took a walk with uh, is just recently divorced after many years together. And, and it's like, you know, I don't think they're done. Um, and, and he's been, you know, Frank from the get-go. It's like, well, friends is what I'm looking for because I don't want to be alone. Right? And I'm going, maybe it's a good thing to learn how to be alone so that when you want to be with someone it's because you want to be with them and not because you don't want to be alone right and i just made that little connection i don't mind being alone at all i love being alone but i want to be with somebody you know i want this here as well, <laughs> you know? So I am sitting with the breath of that. I don't necessarily have in the moment a lot to say, but a lot to feel. And as I sink into that, again, a sense of love, companionship, togetherness, and, and intimacy in the context of um, closeness, mm -hmm. nakedness, uh, tenderness, fierceness but more right in the moment, the tenderness and the openness, specifically here in this, our friendship arises, the amplitude of which is, how would I even say it? Um, a wave, um, in a certain sense, piercing, but in a good, way of showing up, if you will. So I'm experiencing all that within, within your words, within our friendship. 
and and I get everything that you said in terms of I want that here. Even if we're just sitting across from each other and our toes are touching or wiggling or whatever it happens to be. And you said it, it's not a question of not wanting or not being able to be alone. You're you're that's beyond. That's way past for you. And I'm just holding that with you. I, again, I don't have that transition as you spoke about earlier. How do we go from to? But perhaps holding it together can incubate, can help mm -hmm. see how that bridge gets to be formulated. And how the heart of what we're speaking about, the, your heart, physicality, soul, gets to build that bridge or walk that bridge or find that bridge and have somebody doing their part <laughs> building that bridge yeah. from the other way. <laughs> yeah. And that's way different. It's, it's curious. That's way different than a fairy tale. And although what I just said may sound phantasmagorical or fairy tale like, we're, we're talking about it at a different level. And, and I would further say that in a certain sense, at least energetically, existentially, and physically, perhaps emotionally, we are creating that bridge. Perhaps not only here, but wherever else you want to take that bridge. And, and that the, the spending of the time with this kind of incubation and deliciousness and lusciousness and richness and potential of it is part of how those bridges are built or magnetized towards mm -hmm. oneself. And I also have this sense of Moving closer. <laughs> and, and again, tears arise. How would I even say it? Of something even more about Helena. Something even, I mean, and I say even more because there's so much richness that you have given and shared and opened and shown and enjoyed and reciprocated and all of that, but something even more that's going, pick me. I'm ready. I'm ready to be in the world differently. And again, it's when you're at this threshold, which is, you know, where most people are maybe down here off the screen and you're here and we're going, oh, yet there's something more this way off the screen. Is what I'm experiencing of who you are. And as I've often said to you, and it's, it's from my heart and I could feel this energy. I want that. Bring that on. How beautiful, how sacred, how lovely, how physical, how feminine, how embodied, how whole, how complete, how beautifully outrageous and true and eloquent and natural <laughs> and physical and present. You were just, it is such a, I was going to say treat, but somebody, I just tweeted to somebody who said, uh, 
finding an awesome circle of friends is pure luck. And I went, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not even close to being pure luck. It takes, it takes effort, I would say. Not efforting, but effort. It takes energy. It takes work. It takes discernment. It takes me being interesting and me being interested in, you know, I have to be somebody that awesome people would want to hang with, right? I need to be open and vulnerable and willing to reach out a hand and make an invitation that might or might not be accepted by those awesome people that I'm, you know, drawn to, etc. It's not luck, right? It's, it's, it's something that is a, an amazing circle of friends. Is something that you create and you curate. It doesn't just happen. It's like, no. And, and that's the... That is like you are, you know, one very shining star in this circle of amazing friends that I have. Right? And it's such a, you're a very special star. You're very much a Gary star. Um, as are you the Helena star in my life. I, yeah. Reciprocity. But, but you, you help me see what I feel. So there's a lot of, It's like when I when I when I do what I do here, you know, I spill my beans and out they go, and 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 you, you know, sharing in the way that you do, what you pick up on, what emotion, what feeling, what sensation arise in you, and just being able to give it back to me and say, this is what happens here, this is what I see. This is what I feel. Um, it's, it's, it is, it is that multidimensionality where you help me see and experience me because what you feel. I feel because I am also kind of in you over there, right? So it's like an expansion of sorts. That is, you know, it's like, again, being able to receive that and perceive that is like I have definitely not been able to do either of those for the better part of my life, I think, or I haven't known, or I haven't put myself in, I haven't curated the friendships required for me to experience it. You know, I can also say, you know, you can bring a horse to the water trough, but you can't make them drink. No, yeah, you know, it's like it comes when it comes and it comes when I'm ready. And I am so ready for this. And I love, I love doing that. I love having that. And the richness, all of the richness of which, I would even say it is part of who you are. That multidimensionality of which you speak. And the bandwidth, if you will, of that, the, the ripeness of it, the lusciousness of it. And I don't want to sound diminishing of anybody, but 
again, it's like, it's here. And most people aren't of that ilk yet. And I don't know the, the poignancy of that, poignancy, um, but there's something to that. I, I want to acknowledge how broad and multidimensional and skillful you are in that. And I would imagine it's hard to find dance partners other than through that curating and mm -hmm. all of that of which you speak. And th there's two things that I'd like to just pull out of what you spoke about. And I don't know if I've, I have a bit of deja vu that I may have said this before to you, but I went to a concert once. Just stop me or slow me if, if you've heard this. And I sat next to a guy who was a professional clown. Oh. And I had never spoken to a professional clown before. You know, thinking totally circus or immaturity and all of these kind of things. But what an amazing person. And he took, you know, part of what he took his skills and his art and his heart and his compassion into his hospital situations mm -hmm. for children, you know, where he brought joy, where he brought a different kind of dance into the lives of children. So beautiful person, a beautiful man. And back to your words of seeking to be interested and interesting. When I asked him, what's his secret? about being a successful professional clown. And he did many things, mime and performances and all kinds of things. He said, seek not to be interesting, but only seek to be interested. And he used the example of, you know, going on a street corner, and deja vu here, so, but going on a street corner, pointing up and being so interested in seeing something in the sky that people will come who are interested and go, what's he looking at? What does he see that I don't see? And, and to me, in this exchange that you spoke about at the top of the call, you were interested, asking, curious, compassionate, all of these things. And he didn't, he didn't seek to be interested. Mm. He couldn't meet you there. So, so it's an invitation here that your interest being given will either bring people to looking with you or not, but that's all that's needed. Mm -hmm. You know? You have I hope you have never strived to be interesting in our friendship, and it's not necessary. So that, that's that's a small part, but but perhaps, um, you know, something here. And then you mentioned something else, and I wrote down two words to try to remind myself, but boy, I cannot get <laughs> my writing. <laughs> whatever it was, may it come back. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but it had something to do with agency. Agency and then the other side of that of self-doubt. Mm -hmm. And I certainly have had and still do plenty of that. And watch it as a triggered state. It's like, where did that, you know, the same curiosity, where did that come from? Why? What's the purpose of holding on to that? 
What purpose did it serve? You know, all kinds of things. And if I might issue an invitation, it would be not so quickly to go into self-doubt as somebody not being interested as your problem. Because it's really in a certain sense, you know, it could have something to do with you and a historical past and all of those things, but it is more to do with that person than it is to you. You know, that interested Helena, the flower, the fruit, the nectar, the nurturance, everything that that is. How would I even say it? Um, in the right holding of that cannot be diminished by anybody. And a simple example, and again, my tears arise in my eyes, um, but, you know, I think of a, a lily or pick a, pick a favorite flower, but a lily somehow comes to mind. So this trumpet lily, this poo, this explosion <laughs> of earth and dirt and nature and enzymes and all the things that are part of earth and the part of the plant just exploding, you know, in the garden. Maybe it's a single bloom today. And somebody could walk by and not even notice, but it's like that explosion is still happening <laughs> and is worthy. Now we're different than that because we're much more and differently relational, but at the same time, the invitation to that explosion of who you are, oh, may it never be diminished. Question is curious as, you know, okay, maybe there's doubt or maybe there's something going on that I need to pay attention to within but may it never be diminished, ever. Not on my watch anyway. And if, may I continue, or do you have something to add? To, no. Okay. Continue. In my meditation this morning, so here's a parallel. It may be, it may be this hyperlink too, but I had this sense of Gary is dead. Oh. And let's see if I could try to explain this in in the elevator speech, but this Gary that has always thought he was nothing, could never be anything, who every time he looked at wanting something or wanting a relationship with a particular person or anything, would just trip and fall and bumble and end up in the mud because I thought that's who I was. So there was this sense of that, Gary. It's like, served a purpose. You know, I want to honor and be, have compassion and integrate that person totally within me. But that person as this identity is gone. And the invitation here would be that Helena that's diminished or that feels unimportant or diminished because somebody was not interested and couldn't be and didn't have the facility or was perhaps on the other side of things, maybe trying to be hateful or hurtful. And I'm not saying that was the case, but whatever it came from, you know, maybe it's time to go, gosh, you served a purpose. I love you. And to come home to something different and open up into yet that broader dance of what you speak. And with that, for me, the Gary is dead, that Gary. It's like, the floor feels different this morning. <laughs> Walking into the bathroom, <laughs> first thing this morning, it's like, wow, this feels different. And I've done that every day, you know, <laughs> for the most part, for how many years? Yeah. It's like, wow, the air feels different. 
the walls feel different. I look different in a way. It's time. It's time, Helena. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Lovely. It is lovely, and it is so cool to be a human alive, being able to experience such a thing as here you are, like a new, right? It's like mm. I saw um, a little video of a crab. Uh, you know, getting rid of its old shell. And it's like, it looks kind of funky. <laughs> like, you know, crabs with their big shield and the legs, and you could just kind of see it go, and, and one leg stepping out, two legs, and then kind of blobbing out and just leaving this, the big shield and the legs behind and now being all supple and you know the 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 old looked so dull and no luster or anything you know no movement no nothing and then this new little crab kind of uh you know just oh, what's here in the world now what can i do with this skin um And you have that art of living and are fortifying and growing that, in my experience. And it's helping me to seek that or to broaden that in my life. It's like, gosh, I want to take off that exoskeleton every moment. Is that possible? Is that wise? <laughs> And it has to be curated back to that word. I love that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like, what's in the moment that my shell, this old Gary, yeah. can't yeah. see? Precisely. Wasn't willing to see, wasn't able to see. Yeah, and then, I mean, that's the, it's like, for me, the feeling of that is when I leave that old exoskeleton behind, what was limiting with that one is left behind. What it gave me what was made possible in that, you know, form, mm -hmm. I still carry with me, right? But I leave the, the limits, the boundaries of that behind because I have bumped up against them. It's time to find, you know, a bigger... A bigger playing ground. It's like a there's a bigger field. There's a bigger area here now for me to. It's like okay, what's possible then? Without that limit, or the limit was here and now it's you know a feet further on. What can I do with that one? Which makes me think of of Mark Nepo. He has a. He has a little line that says, stepping, uh, something about stepping an inch into the unknown. You know, it's like, that's enough to start with. You don't have to throw yourself into it completely. It's like an inch is fine. If you need a millimeter, you could do that too, right? But move into it because... What's unknown today will be known tomorrow, right? It's like then something else will be unknown and you step into that. And then the next day, that's the known. It's like... And I listened to a Swedish pod this morning. Um, mm -hmm. Where... Paw said, 
growth or development or or yeah building can only take place during the rest during mm. the times of rest you know you don't grow muscles when you're working out but rather after you've worked out in the resting period that you need to have before you do it again. So it's like I don't wanna I don't wanna make it sound as if it's the constant chase for the unknown or the growth or the expansion or the thingy. It's like no. And I think that's kind of also links back to this love of being alone it's like those are moments of rest those are moments where it just you know it just settles and finds its place and it's like okay and then you can go out in half and a puff again out into the world right and, and it's true of sleep you know that's when a lot of memory and learning and everything gets consolidated and integrated and it's curious too, this running into those exoskeletons, I call them, and shedding them. The awareness this morning was, I wonder how much not releasing those contributes to disease. And even on the broader existential scale, how that contributes to the aging process. And what might happen if we more skillfully from this broader place of light and love and compassion of which we speak, if we nurture those exoskeletons and give them something so that they can go, oh yeah, it's time for me to pop Shut off. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what that does to our bodies over time. I wonder what I wonder how that might extend renewal of the body. And as somebody who, when I pass this mortal coil, as they say, would like to simply dissolve my body, I wonder if that could be part of it too. But that's the hyperlinks, the Gary hyperlinks. Ping, ping, ping. Yeah. <laughs> and you're off and away. Yeah. <laughs> But it's interesting this, I listened to another pod yesterday, also Swedish, about, um, well, it's it's called Marathon Pod, so it's about running, but it was really about the body and the feet and, and stuff. And running, it's like a lot of people have an image of what it should look like when I run. And maybe that's not at all what your body wants to do. Maybe your body wants to flip flop, you know, it's like throw an arm out or an elbow or, you know, do something that is, no, that's not how you're supposed to look when you're running. And that precisely what you say about holding on to and, and clinging is like that's what they were saying in the pot it's like mm -hmm. if you are running and you're not letting your body move the way the body wants to move needs to move is built to move because you're holding in your arms or you know you're supposed to go like this with your arms even though your arms really don't want to do that, or, you know, you're clenching your hands or whatever it is. It's like, that takes energy. Holding, keeping your body from moving the way your body wants to move probably takes more energy than letting your body move, even if your body would then make something that would increase your, you know, the the resistance from the air or whatever it would be, right? It's like, yeah, but holding back from doing that probably 
or at least possibly takes as much or more energy. Um, and it's just, oh, that's so interesting. Like, what do we, what do we hold back from doing for fear of, right? Mm -hmm. This is not how I'm supposed to be. You're not supposed to say this. You're not supposed to dance like this. You're, you know, it's like all of those. God, that takes energy. What a waste. No wonder. Yeah, no wonder so many people are so tired. Yeah. And unknowingly, unwittingly perhaps too. But yeah. In the neurology of the body, the health of the body gets stuck in all of those energy systems, that consummation of precious energy. And it could be, you know, for that broader dance, yeah. for that broader heart opening or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's enormous. And it curtails the genetics in my experience and the DNA of the body. It goes, no, not you. You know, when the, you know, that those elemental parts of our body are going, pick me, you know, I've got something to add, some life force to go. And we're just, no. <laughs> yeah. What's possible when those stuck energy exoskeleton shells are let go of or seen for what they are? Yeah, and, and precisely, it's like seeing for what they are, because now that I have shed the old one, I'm stepping into this new one where there's room for me, right? Right. right. Where they are a good boundary for me. They will allow me to safely explore and expand and rest, not least, right? And then, okay, this one, I filled it up. It's time for this one to be released. Next one, right? So, because I've I've been thinking about boundaries a lot. Uh, in the sense that boundaries are just really nothing more than me being very present to me right here right now and being very clear right here right now what do i need what don't i need what do i want what don't i want just you know in the in the here and now um and that is definitely a place where i can play around more with like where we started this conversation, like, because I think that's perhaps one of the, that's the, the inside gap for me. That's the gap for me to bridge. It's like this, because I see that this is not where I should be. But I don't and necessarily should. act on it. I don't, you know, I don't want to be here. I this is not the place for me, right? That right. thing, right? Not the shooting, but but yeah. the from the within. It's like, nah, this isn't it. This is not the dance partner for me. Yeah. And then not acting on it. And I love. Exactly. I'm right there with you in terms of going back to the front of the conversation. And I love what you said in terms of the shedding of the exoskeleton and adopting a new one or being in a new situation where there is room for me. If we just sit with that for a moment, in my experience, that is so expansive. And to curate, I love that word again, the dances, the dance partners, the situations where there is room for me. And not excluding, there's room for both. So it's each person saying there's room for me here. Mm -hmm. But to curate friendships, dance partners, 
where there's room for me. What a gift to you, to the others. And in that, I'd love the, the sense of boundaries of, if I'm hearing you right, being the expansion of self, being the sovereignty of self, my needs, my wants, my gifts, my desires, what I want to receive, what I want to offer, all of them. Mm. It's so different than, you know, having a wall as a boundary. It's this living sense of presence, this living sense of agency, this living sense of what I call sovereignty. But it's also that living sense of the dance itself. And where that living boundary of a dance, two partners, leading and or following simultaneously is a way different way to feel, think, experience boundaries rather than that's where you are. This is where I'm going to be and forever, you know, never the twain shall really meet. I love that fluidity of what I'm sensing as you're talking about boundaries. Mm -hmm. And plants have it too. You, perhaps we've talked about this, you know, that lily is receiving sunlight receiving moisture, receiving nutrients from the earth. There's, where's the boundary really? Yet there's an edge to that flower or there's some type of edge, but it's so permeable. It's so dancing. With and they soul. are dancing. I mean, they do. They <laughs> open up when the sun is out and then they will turn, you know, to follow the sun to maximize how much nutrients can I get? Now, and oops, it's starting to, sun is setting, it's getting cold. I'm going to close because I don't need to expand unnecessarily, you know, from, from this wide open flower. It's like, okay, I'll close for now. And then come morning, whoa, sun, I'm out again, right? Dan starts again. So it's, it's like, and then during the night, what happens? Rest. Uh, you know, probably all sorts of little cell shenanigans going on um, within uh, within within that lily. And, and this is a yeah. Go ahead. You well, know, it's it's just like I I wonder at it, it's as if. Humans, and I shouldn't say humans, but humans of our culture, mm -hmm. we go, f we believe that it should be that rigidity, that it is the firm, harsh, hard, you know, but it's like, you don't see that anywhere else. It's not, that's not what happens. Yeah, and I call that, at least one of the ways to call it is toxic masculinity. Everything mm -hmm. is the way it should be and the way people think it should be. And even the sun itself, but, you know, thousands of degrees at the surface centigrade or Celsius centigrade, I think. But I don't know the technical aspects of it, but it's, it doesn't have a hard boundary. And that's the most, the strongest thing in a certain sense in our solar system. It's like, it's giving off light. It has to have that fluidity of a boundary. And the sun is generally considered masculine. So making that point of even true masculinity of the sun is boundaryless or is that fluidity of boundaries as we're talking about. And the, the culture I find is so permeated with that sense of that toxic masculinity as I'm referring to it here. It's like, yeah, they have no clue how expansion and sovereignty and dancing is really <laughs> where life is created, where power, if you will, not so obsistic or objectified power, but where real creativity, generativity lies. And again, last night I was down by the ocean with my sister and we were skinny dipping in the ocean. It's now 15 degrees Celsius in the water probably, which is 30, 70 72 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. 30, 40, 50, 
62 degrees, 60, 62 degrees. Cool. Right it's now, cool. Something. So yeah. it's, it's, it's finally, it's finally getting cold enough to be really lovely. Um, <laughs> So we skinny dipped and we had dinner and we were talking, talking, talking. And one of the things that I, well, for some reason, we, we, I got to think about a book that I have yet to get because it's not available on Better World Books yet. So I have it in my wish list. It's a book called The Goddess and the Alphabet, which Dominic has spoken about and I've heard it about it at different pods and, and Matthew has spoken about it. And it's like, okay, I need to read this book. But as far as from what I'm getting from the book, it is this thing where the start of the end of, of goddess worship, of goddess honoring, of goddess, you know, of of knowing and being with and in the power of the feminine, right? Kind of matches when, you know, that decline starts when alphabets starts to arrive. Alphabets that you could then say, it's like, well, there, there you have that masculine, you know, the order, the structure, this is what it looks like. You can define it clearly. And this is the sound and these are the words and, all of that. And it's just such an interesting, like, oh, yeah, something shifted there. It was like, all right. So I'm, I'm, I, I want to read that book um, along with the other gazillion books. <laughs> I have, thanks to Matthew, I found Better World Books, which has um, used books and new, but used books, and you can just, so this was my latest stack that I got just the other day. Oh, um, wow. And it's just, it's just thrilling. It's like they have these great books. So I'm just, and for every book you buy, they give one away. Yay. Right? Wow. Wow. Um, Thank you for that. I had not known about them. Yeah. Better World Books is great, but it's, it gives me this, it, it, again, it makes me look at me and myself and boundaries and fluidity and I guess what, I mean, what makes something toxic, like, toxic femininity or toxic masculinity, which is not women and men and it's not female, male, you know, it's like, it's that other thing. And I'm definitely have both and you definitely have both. But toxic is when you kind of stay with one. It's too much. There's too much. I mean, water is, you know, necessary for us, but drink too much, it gets toxic. You know, 20 liters of water in an hour, and you're dead. It doesn't take that much even, but, you know, kids don't try this at home. But, so just that. Yeah. So, so I call that objectification. We could call it polarization. Anytime you pick one or the other. Mm. And there's really... A continuum mm. and nature is always a continuum you know that you saw your book i thou it's a continuum it's not separate i thou david bohm's folding and unfolding universe mm. male female it's all a continuum <laughs> And the trick of, and I think what happens in that dance space, that agency of the dance itself that we're talking about, is that we're, you hold, we, the two, however many are dancing, hold the continuum. Not that either you or me, or when you play the piano, not either the left hand or the right hand. It's both. both. There's a, you're holding the continuum. And it integrates, you know, it takes the whole body, brain, and soul, really, if you're, you know, open in that level, to dance like that. 
And that's the, that's part of the nature, or one way to say the nature of the rising, the advancing, if you will, or the ascendancy of a different level of human consciousness. We're talking about that kind of dance. Mm -hmm. Friendship, community, collective love. Mm. <laughs> I want to be here for that. <laughs> we are here for that. We it's are happening. here for that. Yeah. 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 Dominic speaks about it as 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 poles in a battery. You know, that's you need both poles for there to be a current, right? It's like yes. you need both. Um which also, you know, and that's also a a way of looking at it that just makes me go, ah, oh, yeah. And there's no power without connecting the two. No. In a certain sense. Precisely. Precisely. If you were to just have the one or you have the one, but, you know, like over here you're pretending that one doesn't exist and over here you're <laughs> pretending that one doesn't exist. It's like, sorry, dude, it ain't going to happen. Right? It's like, you won't have fun. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. There will be no dance today. <laughs> and like that's not that's not what I'm aiming for. I yeah. want to do the dance. Oh, well, speaking of dance, next Tuesday yes. on the seventh of September, uh, Lindy Hop classes start again. Oh wow! Oh, oh, cool. <laughs> fingers crossed that we will actually get through the ten session course that I started in March of 2020. We did three <laughs> classes then, and then we did three classes a year ago, and now hopefully the final, final four. Fingers crossed. <laughs> may it be. May, it, may be. it be. I haven't danced since end of October, I think. Maybe beginning November 2020. Yeah. Mm. Well, I have. You know, I've danced. I danced every morning in the bathroom, but I haven't Lindy hopped. And and that's one of the things about Lindy hop. It is better to do when you have a partner because that's better. It's like those poles of the batteries. It's like it doesn't really happen if you just have the one. You need the both. Um. Yeah. So how, if if I may ask, how, what is your physical, what is your body experience, what is your self experience as we have talked today, or now that we have gone through this part of the conversation? I'm very curious about that. I'm interested. So I don't really know what you're asking. Shall I but, ask again? Well, you could, or I can answer, and then you can say, "No, no, I meant this." <laughs> okay, all right. Let's let's do that one. <laughs> uh, um, so, what I'm feeling in and with my body, I'm still, you know, physically, I'm still, I'm stiff. My mm -hmm. shoulders, my neck, it is still stiff, mm -hmm. but there's um. There's a bit of a, uh, there's a fluidity in my body and I haven't really had it all day. I've been in a couple of zoo meetings and I've been sitting out in the sun and, or in the garden at least. And it's like, so things are starting to shift. That's what I feel. Things are starting to shift. Um, and there's that. It's like when you've been sick and you've been lying in bed for too long and your entire body just says, please move. <laughs> you know, I cannot take another day lying down. Just, you know, do something. It's kind of that sense of, oh, yeah, I think I want to I wanna go out and I want to 
move. I have a walk coming up. I have a friend coming over. So there's a walk coming up. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what's happening in my body. And on another level, with regards to what we've been speaking about, mm -hmm. I don't feel as in the confusion and sadness and, and stuff. It's like, okay, yeah, that's kind of, you know, it's it's not dissipated completely, but it's it's like a gas. It's it's you know, it's it's expanding so that the molecules. It, it's not a dense fog. It's more. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's maybe a little bit of it left, but it's on its way. So perhaps a bit of that an exoskeleton that held yeah. on to it has been released. Yeah. yeah. In in is there. I'm curious, is there a way that, that fluidity to open that part of your body or your neck or your shoulder that was stiff earlier is to open that even more into that part of your body? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's, I mean, I've learned this um, when I started having this problem. And when I was a kid and I had, um, mm -hmm. you know, when I couldn't move my, my head and stuff, I wouldn't move my head because it hurt. Mm -hmm. So I would just be still. And I've learned that in the past couple of years that the best thing to do is to be in motion, not to pressure myself into pain, pain, but just kind of just, you know, nudging it just being there and, and and you can move a lot more than you kind of you think you can't do anything but yeah you can this doesn't hurt at all so i can do that without issues right it's like oh no and now it doesn't hurt until here right so it's like yeah the more i move mm -hmm. surprise surprise the more mo movement there is possible the more the energy flows it's like yeah go figure um, wisely said. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right that this is our fifth recording? I believe so, yes. Wow. Wow, that's right. Timeless. It feels like, and again, my heart opens and my eyes have tears, uh, that we're in this eternal conversation, not as an endless or troubling, but just this eternal conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Timeless. We will continue speaking. For sure, on a regular basis. Um, but I'm kind of curious. I have an idea, and I don't know if this will happen. Um, mm -hmm. Because I've... You're the first, fifth conversation to be recorded. Um, mm -hmm. Even though yours will be the last to be broadcast, most likely. Mm -hmm. Or published. Um but I have a, an idea if I can um, have um, all of us on, all of us who've been in this series oh, wow. on and once. And, and I told Caspian and he said, yeah, that might require some moderation. And that made me realize, oh, perfect, Caspian, you'll have to moderate it. And he was like, yeah, I could do that. So I'll see if we can do that because I think that would be kind of, fun you know just to see i don't know so that sounds sore. delightful i yeah, would love and just, it just just yeah. to share a bit of what it's been like and, and stuff but i'm kind of curious because we have 
spoken for hours before we started to record. And we will continue speaking for hours after we record to, you know, not recording. Um, But is there something, you know, have you learned something? Have you seen something when it comes to this, the our conversations actually being recorded and then published and is like is there something is there something question mark there are many things and as always i let the experience try to tell the story one i would say I have fallen in love over and over again. And each time it's like one of those exoskeletons, like, okay, it's time to let go of that. And then the falling in love happens again. And that in itself is I don't even have words for it. It's whoa, how I want to live. It's how we are living. And not only is that generative, but it's it, t- it tickles, it's fun, it's nurturing, it's opening, it's further inside of me and relationally going, pull that veil aside or pull that exoskeleton or shell off. And it's been a big part of me in how I'm emerging into the world now in other areas of my life. You know, it's helped nurture that same, well, let's pull that veil off here and let's, you know, that same thing over here. And I feel like in my life, so fully, spirit, body, soul, self, masculinity, the whole of who I am, um, dancing in the world in a way that's like, gosh, I've always wanted to live like this. And now I'm doing it. Mm. And the heart of how you have been, we have been, how we've both, you know, curated these openings, if you will, in the recordings and and previous, but especially knowing these will be published in a certain sense and being more, not, how would you even say it? Being aware of the vitality of opening in a published kind of way and not really, not having to have them published either, but, there's there's that sense of really stepping deeper into living in all of the areas of my life. And the I feel like I'm meeting myself where I could not have met myself when I was 17. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm back there going, wow, what are the possibilities of life? What's what's on the horizon? What's over that hill? So it's all this renewal, all of this, wow, I'm living my life in a deeper way than I've ever been able to. So thank you. There's much gratitude, much love, much appreciation for how that has been nurtured and incubated specifically here. Yes. And you, how have these been for you? It's been... In a sense, it it spoils me. <laughs> you know? Because it's like, shit, I get to have this type of conversation with these interesting people 
that I am so interested in mm -hmm. that, you know, it's like, I'm pretty sure my Badoo experiences would have been different had hadn't if I hadn't been doing this pod series because it kind of started, they kind of started at the same time. Um, so that willingness from me and from you and the other four to step in here, like period, like you say, here I am and be here. Even Allison in the in the recording we had where we spoke about how uncomfortable she was with these recordings being recorded or conversations being recorded and then published. It's like, oh shit. Just to be able to have a conversation like that, being recorded and being published, you know, it's like shit. It's it's So it's a it's a little bit like being exposed to the most exquisite, perfect piece of mango, right? That's just picked from the tree. It's ripe. It's there. The flavors, the juice, the everything, you know. Going back to buying one from the supermarket here in Sweden that's been picked when it was not ripe and put on a boat. And, you know, it's like, is it the same fruit even? You know, it's like, so so. that's what I mean that I've been spoiled by this and that that it kind of makes me, you know, if I'm to have mangoes, it had better be one of those picked from India off the tree into my mouth, you know, ripe, right? The other stuff, well, then I don't need, I don't need the supermarket mangoes, right? It's like, no, give me the real deal. And it's available. I, I mean, I think that's perhaps then the other insight that, it is available. Like I said, it's not luck. I'm not here through luck. It's like, no, this is, it, it is, it is possible for people, for me, if it's possible for me, it's possible for you. It's possible for people to find people that you are interested in and get to start to have these types of conversations. And it's just, bingo, it's like, Wow, I won the lottery. You know, there's the luck aspect. Well, you know, it's like, it feels like that. But I know it is something that I am a part of creating. Right? I'm not sitting down and the table is ready. It's like, no, I've, I've been out there. I've been picking the mango. You know, I've been watering the tree. I've been fertilizing the soil, you know. And I think the the aspect of the lottery, I sort of translate that as you don't know who's going to step in or who's going to accept or how, like this conversation, I had no clue, didn't need to know where it would go. And perhaps in a certain sense, even though a mango is all part of a mango family, if you will. Each one has a different flavor, a different juiciness. Um, yeah. A and, you know, that riper mango is much more nurturing too, much more full of nutrients. Yeah, you don't need you don't need as many. You don't want as many. You can't eat <laughs> you as can't, many. <laughs> you can't eat that whole tree. <laughs> no, no, it's like it's not possible. Yeah, right? you have to share that tree. Yeah. In order to harvest all of that ripeness, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I happen to feel, as we've talked about before, that yes, there is curation. There's the need for all of that, 
And this is a natural state of awareness. This is a natural state that's possible. Yeah. At least from the pure potential side of what humanity is. Is this it? <laughs> <laughs> the table has been set. We have eaten. We have eaten, you know, leaning back, putting the cutlery to the side and the napkin on the table, getting ready. Time yeah. for a rest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I would love the group conversation. I have spoken with at least a couple of these people outside of obviously this context, um, but it would be beautiful, curious to explore that as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll see if we can make that happen. I'm, I think we can. Yeah, because it would be, yeah, I think that that would be kind of a little bit of a, a party, um, mm -hmm. you know. And then who knows if there is or what it might be the next iteration of this. Precisely. Precisely. If several of us get together, do you know who knows? But something has been incubated, formed, yeah. birthed. Thank you. From Thank the you. bottom of my heart. Thank you from the bottom and the opening of my heart. Yeah. yeah. Love you. And I love you, Gary. Yeah. Bye. Be well. Take good care. We shall meet again. <laughs> we shall. <laughs>